have a reservation with us today? Wonderful. Can I just have you please uh, place your thumb right there on the panel so that I can get your print? Fantastic. Oh, this device? Oh, it's rather unusual, isn't it? Um, they call it a keyboard, and it was very popular around the turn of the 21st century uh, on planet Earth. It is quite strange, isn't it? Um, I believe I'm the only one in the office here with this sort of input device. I had them special order it for me. I like the sounds that the keys make mm -hmm. and the way that the buttons feel when I push on them. All right, let me look in the system here and get an idea of what tool you looked for. Wonderful, I see here. So you're going to be venturing with us to the Aroxia galaxy, is that correct? Wonderful. Well, here at Whispering World Space Tours, um, you'll find that we provide an all-inclusive space travel experience. So, once you do board our vessel, uh, we will supply you with uh, refreshments and anything that you may need, so. You will actually have your own uh, private attendant who will be able to uh, provide you with any help while you're on board and make sure the air experience is altogether pleasant and enjoyable. Wonderful. Okay, let me just check you in here. Now you will be boarding at Gate 3 right there. It's down this hall and off to your left. Mm -hmm. And let me see here. Yeah, you might want to um, go grab a bite to eat or whatever you like um, beforehand because you do have about an hour until boarding. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, you don't need anything. Uh, of course, all they'll ask you for. Uh, upon boarding is your uh, print so that they can verify your identity and then you'll be able to uh, choose your seat on the vessel and uh, I hope you enjoy your tour. Wonderful. Good day ladies and gentlemen. We are now boarding for our Aroxia flight. So would all passengers who are booked for that flight please join us at gate 3 so that you may board the vessel. Thank you. Hello there. I'd like to welcome you aboard the Whispering Worlds vessel. Mm -hmm. My name is Gladiola Bluebell, and I am going to be your personal attendant during our voyage today. Yes, it's very nice to meet you. I'll actually have you take a seat here and I'll be sitting right beside you. Uh, all of our guests today on our flight are um, given their own personal attendant, so um, it's an honor and a privilege to be yours today. Would you like a pillow for in back of your neck? Not a problem. Here you are. going to be a bit of a long journey today, so I want to make sure you're comfortable. Would you like any sort of refreshments or cakes or... We have a delicious um, raspberry pie from the Archaeus sector? No? Okay. Well, if you do, let me know. It's fresh. Terrific. So we're going to be taking off in just a couple of minutes. So... It's uh, my responsibility to just tell you that we don't allow teleportation devices on board, 
So if you do happen to have one on you, uh, please refrain from using it while we are in flight. Alright. Also, before I forget to mention, this is an autonomous sensory meridian response flight. And I know you're aware of that. Yeah. Most people book it for that particular reason, so it comes as no surprise to a vast majority of our guests. But I wanted to let you know, since it is an ASMR flight, um, a phenomenon that was discovered several hundred years ago, the, you will have a viewing screen in front of you, but you will also have an auditory listening uh, device that is right next to you. And uh, most of the planets give off a particular sound that is quite pleasing that can trigger the ASMR response. So, um, yes, we've actually chosen planets on our route that are, shall we say, um, producers of ASMR triggers, uh, common triggers. So, um, if you just listen into the device when we reach a variety of the planets, I'll let you know when, uh, when it's alright to do so and uh, hopefully we're, we're able to help you relax and uh, get those tingles from ASMR. Okay, great, I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so as we do take off, you're going to feel just a bit of turbulence, but it's nothing to worry about. We've had a few asteroid belt sp storms in the area, so uh, it's kind of par for the course. going to get a bit rocky, but there's nothing to worry about. Okay. Terrific, and, and we're in flight. Alright, so the first planet we're going to be approaching in just a minute here, actually, is the planet of Lafnasia. It's going to be in your viewing screen there. Yes, it is quite magnificent, isn't it? It's a lovely blue color. The interesting thing about this particular planet it is, uh, is that it um, almost consists entirely of water, which gives it its characteristic aquamarine shade. At one point in its history, about five centuries ago, it was almost entirely of land, but its ice caps melted a couple of centuries ago, entirely, and um, leaving us with just a few small bits of land throughout the planet itself. And let me view my notes here. It looks like, oh yes, one of the highlights here is in the westernmost continent, you can see the Marzipan Reservoir. Mm -hmm. And, in addition, the planet itself has a population of approximately one million inhabitants, all of whom are refugees from the Argonian sector. Mm -hmm. Another quite unique thing about this planet is there are 55 languages. None of them are verbal. Uh, all of the languages are either telepathic or using hand sign language. That is rather intriguing, isn't it? Okay, now, I am also told that if you listen very closely, you can hear the rings that encircle the planet. You can hear them rotating. and It's a very uh, pleasing sound from what I'm told. Let's have a listen in, shall we?
is a beautiful sound, isn't it? Yes. I too experience ASMR, so that happens to be one of my triggers, so it was quite delightful. So let's, uh, I think we're moving on now to our next planet. And this is quite a rare sight, indeed. These are the Singing Sisters Twin Planets. You'll notice uh, one planet is green and one planet is brown. Um, it is this way because one planet entirely uh, is made up of grasslands and the other is, in, is a desert. So, <laughs> yes, they are the exact same size though and the exact same mass. Uh, that is why they have the name the Singing Sisters Twin Planets because um, they are very similar. There are approximately a quarter of a million inhabitants on each of the planets. Um, however, uh, at this current time there is a migration that's taking place and a vast majority of the inhabitants of the desert planet will be moving to the grasslands uh, for half a year as the temperatures reach uh, dangerous levels on that desert planet. Mm -hmm. They make this migration every year. Uh, half of the year that particular planet is pretty much in uninhabitable, so they must make that uh, journey over to their grassland counterpart planet. And we'll go ahead and listen in to these planets now. Just go ahead and put your ear to the listening device and you'll be able to hear the sound that it's giving off. Uh, specifically the grassland planet, the desert planet, really doesn't have an auditory um, trigger that it provides whatsoever, but the grassland planet is quite pleasant. Did you think of that? It's remarkable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to make just a short journey to our next stop, our third stop on our trip. And uh, this planet that uh, we're actually approaching right now. Yes, we are traveling at light speed in between planets, so it will go rather quickly. If we were to travel normally, it would take years, possibly even centuries, to travel to these various planets. So, um, precisely, we make it a fast means of travel so that you can get all of them in during our space tour. So this planet is Alandia. And it is actually um, one of the Earth-colonized planets. Some of the uh, inhabitants of Earth traveled to Titan uh, approximately three centuries ago, and some of them made their way to other parts of the galaxy. There are approximately half a million Earthlings on this planet, and Yes, precisely. Well, uh, the Netherlands was often called Holland, and so when they uh, colonized this planet, they uh, gave it that name. It has a certain ring to it, doesn't it? Hollandia. <laughs> right. As you'll notice, this planet has a similar composition to um, the old version of Earth. It has a number of different continents. It's made up of quite a bit of water, uh, with a good mixture of land thrown in there for good measure. And, um, 
The only difference is the water here is not blue, it's purple, and the land mass is not your characteristic brown or green, it's actually a blue, so you have a bit of a reversal there. This particular planet is absolutely beautiful. I could have actually been here several years ago and took a tour uh, that involved landing on the planet. And I stayed there for about two weeks, I'd say. And they have a, an amazing amount of butterflies on this planet. And uh, every year in the summer season, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the butterflies, there are about two million of them. Um, they put on a spectacular show in the sky, and uh, it almost appears as though it's the aurora borealis that happened back on Earth many years ago, except the belts of light and color are made entirely of butterflies. It's truly amazing. So we're going to have a listen into this planet now, so go ahead and put your ear to the listening device again, please. the next planet now, but I hope you found that sound enjoyable. This is our last planet on our tour. Mm -hmm. well, it's in the hyacinth quadrant, and um, let me take a look at my notes here. Oh, you know what? We're in for quite a treat, actually. This is the planet of Patagonia, and if you notice, around the planet itself, there is a dancing comet belt, and they call it the dancing comet belt, because once every decade, um, the comets vibrate almost in rhythm, and put on quite a spectacular um, display that can be seen from the planet's surface. I've never seen it myself, but I've heard it's truly beautiful and breathtaking. This planet looks like it has three million inhabitants, so it isn't the most inhabited planet that we've seen today. And let me take a look at my notes. I know I'm one of the newest guides, so I don't have everything memorized quite yet. Plus, we put on several different planets onto our roster each journey, so I never quite know which one I'm going to see when I board the vessel. Let's see here. Oh yes. This planet actually experienced a civil war um, some 700 years ago, and it changed a vast majority of the landscape that you see when you view the planet from this angle. As you can see, it looks as though there are five continents that are visible from this side of the planet. That used to be three, but 
They evidently dealt a great amount of destruction, and the continents divided, um, thanks primarily to nuclear devices and uh, seismic implantations that caused the continents to split. And so there is quite a f lot of volcanic activity on this planet on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's go ahead and have a listen in then, shall we? This is such a rare opportunity, isn't it? Well, that's it for our flight today. We're going to be heading back to the home planet. Do you have any questions for me? No. All right, then. It's been a pleasure helping you today, and I'm glad I could guide you through the galaxy, or at least a small corner of it. Mm-hmm. Please do come back and see us again and go on another one of our tours. We have a variety of uh, vessels and a variety of galaxy tours that we offer, so I'm sure we'll have many more that will suit you and your taste. Fantastic. Many blessings.